People say that there is no, that they don't like pro basketball. They're, they're like, no, it's all just isolation. There's no defense. There's, there's no dribbling, whatever. There's no teamwork. Uh, I also don't like when athletes are paid this a GDP of a small country uh, to be an athlete. But also, I show you the clip this morning because this includes some of the best ball movement of the last few years in the NBA. I think, you know, when, when somebody works as a team in basketball, Ball, you're like, oh, that was sweet. Oh, that's awesome. And it's one of the rare, like, clip worthy examples uh, that we can look at a team working together. That wasn't like, oh, it was like one cool pass. Those few different plays, that's an 11 minute video. And so I had to find the three, the, the like, the like three or four plays, like, right there that all kind of work together uh, that I liked the best. And the thing is, is that all of those plays were multiple passes. They were a team working together to do something because they realized they were more than just the sum of their parts. And uh, I, I'm not using a sports clip. You're like, sure, another person giving a sermon using a sports clip at Hope. It's not because sports clip is more important. If, if I had a three-minute clip of, like, accountants just killing it, like, uh, be, showing great teamwork, I would show that video. Uh, but... I, I did not find it. So uh, basketball is just easy that way. Um, but here's the thing. Even in that video that you watched, those guys were likely the superstars of their high school, right? They were the pride of their neighborhoods. Each one is a world-class athlete. <clears throat> Sometimes we lose that with the rhetoric that surrounds professional sports. We get to be the critics. I'm from the Twin Cities, and so the thing you're going to keep hearing is, oh, the Timberwolves are terrible, right? Oh, they're, they're bad. Or, this week, uh, because of the news, uh, condolences to Packer fans and also to Jets fans, I guess, uh, depending on how you feel about it. But the thing that I hear over and over again uh, this week is, oh, the Packers are going to be bad, this year, because Jordan Love is terrible at football, right? Friends, Jordan Love and every player that we watched, including the ones on the bench, they are all five times the athlete of anyone in this room, right? Isn't that wild? But the rhetoric that's, oh, it's no good. It's no good, right? And yet, and yet, all of them would wow us with their proficiency in that gym down there. But the thing that makes it work for them is their work as a team. It is only when those incredible individuals that are able to do crazy things in their given sport, it's when they work together that they're able to achieve success. Like, even in the business world now, um, the, like, a, a, a group at your work is called your team. We have fully embraced the team mentality. We love a good win one for the Gipper speeches in movies or in television. That's one of the reasons why Ted Lasso is so, uh, is so popular, because we love a good motivational uh, coach story. And everyone kind of always seems to be, I think, a little on autopilot when, you know, after somebody wins and they shove a mic in their face after they've run like nine miles during a game, like after the championship. And they're like, you know, I just, I'm really excited and uh, the team did a great job. It seems like the thing when you're thinking of what to say, you're just like, yeah, we have a great team. But there's a reason why teamwork has made its way, the, this, this phrase, teamwork has made its way into our businesses, uh, that, that it's almost cliched to the point that it's talked about so much. It's a reason, and the reason is that it's, it's also true. We've been talking through this series, So Now What?, where we look at the various different ways that we continue to build on our faith after a big moment like Easter or Christmas, some big retreat, and you're faced to go back to the real world, and you're like, was that just some sort of emotional thing? Was I just going through something? Uh, why, why did that seem so meaningful? It's difficult to know how to continue when everything else in life doesn't feel so holy. We talked about the importance of consistency. We talked about, you know, keep showing up both to church and to your life. Two, we talked about the importance of serving, of getting involved, using your blessings to bless others, getting some skin in the game. That's what we talked about last week. You can find any of these on the YouTube channel in particular, but today we are talking about teamwork. Phrases, don't do it alone. You want to continue to invest in your faith, 
don't do it by yourself. This is something that we could all learn a lot more at this moment in time in our politics, in our communities, in our interests, in our very divided world. But I'm giving this talk this morning um, to the very best group of people that can hear it, not just because of who each of you are, I'm not slighting anybody here, uh, but because who we are demographically. <clears throat> Please hear me as I say this. This is not a why can't we all just get along sermon. This is actually a... Uh, a talk about how much we need other people if we want to be the men that God created us to be. A recent study showed, and this just this like wrecked me yesterday. I walked around like talked to multiple staff members about it after I read this. A recent study in the UK showed that one in five men could not name a single close friend. One in five. But I think about a lot of guys I know, and I go, yeah, that seems about right. But it shouldn't be. It's not just British folks. In the United States, suicide is the 12th, 12th leading cause of death, and the most at-risk group is middle-aged to older white guys. Look around the room. I know that doesn't apply to all of us, but a lot of us it does. In 2021, men accounted for 80% of suicide attempts, 80%. And a recent health study showed that chronic depression stemming from specifically from loneliness is the equivalent to smoking several cigarettes a day. That's how harmful it is on our body from the mental and physical uh, deprecation that happens in those states. A, a Brigham Young study uh, was also done that saw that loneliness increased the risk of premature death by 32%. This isn't just feeling sad. This is stuff that affects us. The point I'm making is we as, as guys often feel alone. We as guys often feel alone, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But it does beg the question, right? I just named all those statistics stemming from loneliness, stemming from a lot of issues, talking about feeling alone. And you're, the first question is why? A few months ago, uh, experts suggested uh, that we've passed the 8 billion mark on world population, 8 billion people. In 1950, there were estimated to be just over 2.5 billion people. Now we're at eight. The subcontinent of Asia is anticipated to have almost 4.5 billion by itself. Why do we feel so alone? There are so many more people than there used to be. Places more crowded than it's ever been, even in our community in Des Moines in Iowa, not known for its size. It's growing, right? So why do we hear so much about people going through it? Part of the reason is that we feel like we are supposed to. We feel like we're supposed to be alone. First part of this uh, it has to do with the expectation that people put on men. First one I'll talk about is the Lone Ranger narrative. It's one of the most popular conceptions of what it means to be exceptional. We are often taught, and this is throughout generations, it is told to me, I am, I feel like this is like me admitting something. Uh, I am a millennial. Like the, I, the key demographic of what a millennial is, the age, it is me. I was born in 1991. I'm like right there. Um, I know we have probably technically a few, a uh, few Gen Z folks in the room. I know that we got Gen X. I know we got baby boomer groups. All of us have learned these uh, things that I'm going to talk about in a number of different ways. Um, the, the, the idea of the Lone Ranger, quite specifically, we are taught as men, the ultimate goal is to be the one and only who can get the job done best. The ultimate success is that if you and you alone are the one who's going to be able to do it. This is articulated to us in a million different ways, just to list a few. Indiana Jones, Iron Man, Jason Bourne, James Bond, Top Gun 2, recent, right? All of these solo guys are the one and only ones who can save the day. Another version of this 
is the self-made man. The idea that greatness must be accomplished alone, right? This is demonstrated in business. It's demonstrated in arts, in fictional narrative, in the books that we read, etc. The self-made man, we are taught, is the true success. And that uh, the very idea that someone might have had some support at some point, if somebody's like, I'm a self-made person, and then you're like, actually, they had this help at some point. Oh, it cheapens the story. That somehow someone supporting somebody else is somehow cheapened by someone else's help or shared success. The truth is, every self-made man has been assisted by people or systems, and the very notion that we as a culture go, no, 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 they didn't, they didn't do it all by themselves, they had help. The idea that that would take something away from them makes my point, right? The very idea that someone might have had some support as, at some point as a slight against them indicates, we got this really confused because we feel like we're supposed to be doing all of this by ourselves. Another thing that we're, we've uh, been taught and that we've learned is that we are not supposed to demonstrate weakness. Part of this makes sense in our head since there's a survival instinct to that. But all of a sudden, when honesty becomes weakness, that's when things get real dangerous. I get it. People don't want to be weak. That's, uh, that's, uh, we, we're all here because our ancestors decided they didn't want to be weak, and so they didn't get eaten, right? Like, the positive, and we can be grateful for that. And all of a sudden, when we start calling things weak just to make us as men back away from them, that's where we're going to run into problems. Notice I said honesty, not vulnerability, because that feels bad to some people. People don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to be vulnerable to anything. But I like to say honest because if you are struggling and you are alone and you are broken and you go along to yourself and other people pretending you're not, you're not fighting against vulnerability. You're being dishonest. <laughs> you know? it's, it's lying. It's not being strong. Like that, and the funny thing is, is that's a fact. That's not like me sharing an opinion. But it feels weird to say that because that's not what we're taught. It's as simple as that. Um, to drive this point home, what I'm saying is, is that so many of us are alone because we're told that we're supposed to be. Think of it that way. We are at our best. I just named what, I just listed all the stuff we're supposed to be. And if you do all of those things, if you are the self-made man, you had no help. You conquered the mountain. You started the business. You did the thing. You are the superhero in your community, and you did it alone, and you are so alone at the end of the day. And that's the best case scenario. And what we're seeing in men over and over again is that there are a bunch of dudes who haven't reached the pinnacle but are still alone. And I think the most telling thing is that we hear from so many guys that basically do all the stuff that they're supposed to, achieve all the things, have all the cars, have all the money, and guess what? They do it, and they're still alone, and they realize it's not enough. We're hearing from every level that being alone is not how we're made to be. It's so deep in our bones, so the question is, what do we do? It's like hardwired into us in our comfort level, so what do we do? My idea is let's get a new picture. I, I was not talking smack on those movies earlier. I loved every one of those movies that I listed and will continue to love them and watch them. But I think we need to do so with our eyes open. I'm saying let's recognize that they represent a fiction and point to something that is instead, and let's let us now point to something instead to who we are made to be. Let's look and compare and contrast what Scripture has to say about who we are made to be. So I'll have some columns for us. Because I formatted them, they don't look great. So listen, this is a house of God's grace. And uh, if you judge me, uh, you're not like Jesus. There you go. Uh, so 
The world's expectations, I talked about the Lone Ranger narrative, the self-made man, the uh, vulnerability is weakness. What does scripture say for us? Where the world would say go alone, scripture says in Hebrew 10, 24, 25, let us consider how we may spur on one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as one, as some are in habit of doing, but let's encourage one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching, meaning the day that we get to meet Jesus. The world says go alone. Hebrews says don't give up on being together. Where the world has, been to, has told us do it alone or not at all, Ephesians 4.16 reads, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. The word of God, that doesn't sound anything like go it alone. We are all made for specific purposes to do what only we can do in the world. And if all of a sudden we cannot do those things because we're trying to do everything else, the world, the kingdom does not come the same because only you are gifted to be you. That is how good God is. It's not do it alone or, do, or don't do it at all. It's know where you are in the body. Know what you are meant to do. Where we are told that being honest with where we're at, that acknowledging need in any way, shape, or form was weakness, Scripture tells us again and again and again that we are meant to lean on each other, just to name a few. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12 states that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. Uh, and the letter of James 5.16 tells us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other that you may be healed. Galatians 6.2, bear one another's burdens as an instruction. Am I supposed to care? Yes. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill, and so, therefore, fulfill the law of Christ. John 13, 34, 35, as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And this is what the end of that scripture says. This is how people will know that you are my disciples. This is how, that exact thing Love one another. Instead of vulnerability is weakness, saying, as I have loved you with grace and honesty and brought weakness to you, died for you, that is how people will know that you follow me. That is a bold statement and something that we can follow. I don't think I'm surprising anybody by these, by these lists, right? Right? We could all, you could have all told me that this is the expectation. But we are meant to support each other. We are meant to go together, and we are the one that fits into the major whole. My question is, how does this look for you? How does this actually manifest for you? You might say, Chris, you're saying this to guys before we jump into groups. Like, we know that we are supposed to to be connected, right? You're preaching to the choir, and thank you for that. I am grateful that you all are here. Even the most connected among us still has remnants of the toxic things that we were handed to us by well-meaning, not talking smack on anybody's dad, right? We have been told these things by well-meaning but still broken men who were in turn handed the same thing. But we get to break the cycle for this. We have the opportunity not just to show up on a morning and eat delicious breakfast, but to actually live our entire days, weeks, and lives being the man that God made us to be. We actually get to do that. So when it becomes autopilot, sometimes we default back to the things that we were told. Sometimes when we autopilot our lives, we default looking like this left side instead of the right side, right? 
to wrap it all up, we got into this series to talk about how we can continue to lean into our faith and grow. And I, I talked about all of these things will require practice, and this one is perhaps the one that requires practice most of all. The practice of stepping out of what is so many of our comfort zones and loving people the way that Jesus did, honestly and with the intention for community. It is never easy, but it's always worth it. When people talk about faith changing their lives, this happens a lot in the mountaintop moments, people are like, wow, after that time, I'll never be the same. But the, when you talk to somebody around here who has been around and their faith has actually transformed their lives, this is what they're talking about. We are being called to not just have a moving experience that we'll always remember fondly, what they're talking about in being changed is they have, through practice, learned to live more like the person that those Holy Spirit experiences are about. They are learning how to walk with the God. They're learning to how, to how to show up day after day, developing the practice. It's not just, wow, that really great experience stuck in my brain and all of a sudden magically I'm different. It's no, I've learned how to rewire some of the ways that I've been handed brokenness. And instead, I've learned how to put that at the cross and to walk with Jesus. I've learned how to do that day after day is what, is what those people are talking about. It's about letting the Spirit lead you and lean into who Jesus has called us to be as the man that we are. May we all do so knowing certainly that we all will fail and fail pretty frequently, right? But we'll lean on each other as we do. You cannot do this alone. Somebody here in me is probably thinking of that as a challenge. It is not. I'm not saying that despairingly. I'm saying it descriptively. I am telling you something that is already true. You by function cannot go it alone. You will not succeed. Mostly because you're not supposed to. For anybody that this matters to, it is okay that you cannot do it by yourself. It's okay that things have gone wrong. It's okay that you've made mistakes. It's okay that you have never been good enough on your own strength. You get to walk alongside people who share that story because it's every single one of us following the one single one who was good enough and demonstrated that kind of life the one lived in community, the vulnerable one, the one to love. I'm not trying to make anybody or not. I'm just telling you the type of ways that you can show up in your life. May God bless us with the strength to see the ways, uh, the, the eyes to see the ways to show up and the strength to walk that path. Amen. Here are discussion questions to guide us to kind of wrap us up for this series. First one, how were uh, the issues of friendship and vulnerability modeled to you by men in your life? If you feel icky by the word vulnerability, that might just like highlight a few things. I even wondered about not using it. I'm like, oh, guys might not want to talk about vulnerability. Well, that's kind of the point that I'm making this morning. How was that modeled to you or not modeled to you? How did that look? Who is a man right now that you know is feeling alienated? This is not, a, sometimes it feels weird when we're like, think of somebody and invite them. Bring them to hope. I don't care if they show up here. What I'm saying, I mean, I do. I would like for them to come. But my point is, it might not be hope. It might just be you. You might just get to welcome somebody in out of that place the thing you hear about these statistics of people that we lose to the darkness all the time is, man, I had no idea. Who do you know that could just use a hand? Maybe it is inviting them here to the space, but the first step is just showing up for somebody else. Who do you know at your work, in your community, in your neighborhood that might just benefit from a little bit of, uh, of showing up and saying, hey, how's it going? How are you? Make some small talk. Make them feel seen. Do what you need to do. But who do you know is feeling alienated? 
because statistically we can't pretend it doesn't exist. And the third question is, what is something you're going to take from this series? What is one action step? Heaven forbid uh, I run around here like a crazy person up here on stage and then we're like, yeah, Chris did fine and then we all go about our day. No, what is something that we're going to take from this series? And once again, just to review, talking about consistency, talking about uh, serving, uh, give, uh, giving of your time, talent, treasure, energy, getting some skin in the game, or third, with not doing it alone. What is something you're going to take from this series? Even if it's not something I said. As long as it's an action step, I feel good about that. Sound good? Let me pray for us real quick. God, we're grateful that we're grateful that you made all of us here and brought us all together. God, there's a version of all of this that you could have constructed where all where we're all just running in our own lanes suffering silently and and just supposed to get over it. God, forgive us when we pretend that that's how things are supposed to be. God, it's so deep in so many of us that we're supposed to be this version of, of ourselves that we'll never be able to be. But God, I just pray that we would look to you. We would look to Jesus and we would follow that example, God. Undo the knots inside of us that tell us we're not good enough. Undo the parts of us that say that we are supposed to be some perfect peace that needs nothing. God, help us to lean into the truth of where we're at. Help us to stare down our demons confidently. And help us to see the truth that not looking at them is just fear. And that is weakness. Help us to stare our problems in the face and help us to, to reach out for help when we need it. Thank you, God, for making this a place where we can run with others, that we can love well, that we can have brothers to walk this path along with. For anybody here in my voice that's feeling alienated, God, help them to feel seen and heard, not just by people in this room, but by you, God. We're grateful for you and we love you. Give each and every person here in this room, a next step. Help each and every one of us to take it. It's in your good name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Grace and peace, friends. Go be good to each other. We, uh, we will see you next week starting a new uh, series. It's going to be fun. See you later.